Greetings! Today I have uh, another cassette uh, related uh, device. It's a Sony uh, stereo cassette deck TCTX333 and um, I will be taking this uh, apart today. Uh, it's not operational, I've, uh, I have tried plugging this uh, into um, the power and it does not operate, it produces a hum and um, no life uh, from it whatsoever so let's see what's what's wrong with this um, and tear it apart see um, see what's inside um, before we do that on on the outside this this unit is a full logic so there'll be a lot of uh, nice mechanical uh, solutions inside uh, there will be a lot of uh, movement uh, and 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 whatnot you'll see uh, because everything is uh, Operated by push uh, soft buttons, so there is n there is no uh, clanking switches. This was a part um, of a larger uh, stereo system. Uh, the units on it were connected through this uh, Sony called this AU bus. So using this, this uh, communicated between the segments of the of the stereo system, and uh, that's why you could, for example, on this press uh, CD sync. And this would basically start recording on the cassette um, in uh, in sync with uh, when when you press play on uh, on the CD player. So it was communicating some sort of proprietary uh, serial bus. But anyways, let's undo all the visible screws on the outside. The unit, the unit is quite heavy by the way, which would normally indicate a good quality product, but over here I think the main, the main weight contribution is the whole mechanical setup, uh, the whole cassette, uh, cassette uh, deck, and also, well, that's stiff. Uh, a linear power supply. Because as I said, I've plugged this in, and it uh, produces that deep uh, hum. So I suspect there is a linear power supply inside, um, not a uh, not a switch mode power supply, which would be significantly lighter. But Okay, and there we go, we're in. So, there is a cassette still uh, stuck in here, I was unable to retrieve it, retrieve it from uh, from the inside. As I said, the, the whole thing does not, uh, does not want to talk, doesn't sound too happy. So, on, on the first glance, uh, this is, the whole thing is a little bit, well, it doesn't look too too high of a quality. I mean, I, w I would expect something slightly better from Sony, to be honest. I mean, there are some components that are at an angle, and I wonder how old this is. Okay, so uh, there is a date code on one of the boats. Uh, 9849 so 49th week of uh, 98 and here's the second one uh, 9851 so 51st week of uh, 1998 uh, so it's the unit is best part of 15 16 years old um, so yeah it's It's quite old, but but still, I mean, the boards are the, just uh, just the cheap um, sort of uh, PCB material. It's not uh, it's 
this sort of paper PCB, uh, not the uh, fiberglass. 9849, another board date code. So I don't know. I always thought of Sony of uh, making quality stuff, but this this just seems like uh, this just looks like some Chinese cheap Chinese stuff, really. Uh, but anyways, uh, I can't see anything obvious. Oh, this there's just some dust on this. Look, this is so old. Uh, uh, this the laminated. I think this was just a, a piece of uh, piece of tape stuck onto the uh, flat flex. Uh, but that's that's just delaminated from uh, from the f uh, from the tape. So yeah, it's it's definitely at its time. And details like this, look the. The boards, when they were uh, panel uh, mounted, separated from bigger thing on the panel, then not nicely separated. Let me just move the camera in a little bit. Okay, so this here, this was just rough. Uh, uh, they went pretty much brutal on this uh, when separating the the panels, uh, the boards from from a larger panel, and uh, oh yeah, not too impressed. But anyways, let's keep unscrewing until this whole thing falls apart. I need a different screwdriver. Some of the screws are self-tapping screws, but the one I just pulled out uh, a second ago is actually uh, a metal, uh, metal threaded uh, screw that's screwed into uh, part of the cassette assembly. So what what is this? Wow, this is... Check this out. So, there is a bodge over here that just got toasted. I mean, I, I'm struggling to say... I think it was a resistor. It might have been a small diode. Let me, uh, let me put a macro on. There we go. So there you go. Uh, the, this is pretty much corpse of a, uh, a component that was here. Um, first of all, it it's a bodge. Uh, it's a genuine bodge because this was put in uh, in the factory. Someone put a a piece of tape underneath, and uh, yeah, they just realized that something was not exactly right. Oh, it was not enough. Uh, and look, there is here is more bodgery. Again, tape and and this is soldered directly to this resistor. So yeah, this this whole bodge is. Uh, not making look at him poor little thing yeah I'm not not very much impressed about this so far
Okay, so let's let's continue taking this apart. Let's let's maybe see how many bodges we can find in this. How many afterthoughts are there in the in the whole design? Let's just undo pretty much everything that's possible. It's an interesting thing, a little flap, uh, like for access to something maybe. But there isn't any obvious adjustment points, maybe some test point, maybe they had to solder this, uh, this ribbon afterwards, I don't know, let's, let's continue. to it in a moment let's remove the rest of the screws okay it seems there is this is held by some Clips. Okay, there we go, another board, there is a massive amount of flux left over from soldering, so I'm not, uh, not that impressed yet again, and there is uh, some sort of silk screen on the, on the bottom uh, of the board, which is nice, uh, that describes some of the components, but the quality of that silk screen is so horrible that Sometimes it's difficult to say whether something's a resistor or a diode. But I don't think this is meant to be um, serviceable anyways.
Okay, this is somewhat taken apart, so um, this is the power supply module and that goes to here, so I'm just going to cut that cable off. Slightly disappointed, I thought that it might be a simple something, I don't know, a fuse or whatnot. I wanted to play about with the actual cassette, uh, uh, cassette deck. I haven't seen one working in a long time, so yeah, but there we go. That's another example of uh, really poor practices. And when assembling this, the balls are just ripped off. Uh, this jumper link serves as a fuse, which is wow. Well, okay, how many amps does it take for a wire like this to burn? Yeah, uh, and we've got a transformer here under under this shielding. It's uh, it's shielded, which is uh, which is nice, but mm, yeah, capson capacitors and diode rectifier, discrete uh, bridge rectifier and uh, some caps on the diodes and yeah, no, right, okay, so I'm, I'm not really inspired by this, uh, this stir down to get the front board off so let me cut it off there we go we'll get we'll get back to it and here there we go so this is this is uh the uh, the ribbon that we saw on after taking that little cover flap on the, on, on the bottom and this is that's basically uh, the head uh, the magnetic uh, magnetic head on the on on the cassette uh, w which is connected to the board they must have been uh, soldering that in afterwards uh, after assembling everything in which is a little bit strange I guess but hey uh, that's their idea of uh, assembling this this whole thing there is a lot of components on here that everything's through through hole and uh, oh god look at this can you This this cap over here, uh, which was clearly an afterthought, um, looks like uh, just like a victim of uh, on a murder scene. There is this, which I think is a diode. I think that that's somewhat uh, reminds me of a glass packaging. Yeah, it is a diode. Uh, this got so hot it melted itself into a piece of tape that was underneath it and the overall reminder of uh, the, of the flux on the on the whole thing look, look. so yeah uh, I don't know, it's just not pretty at all. Um, I was, I actually honestly thought that this would be a really ni a nice, nice design, really good example of, uh, of uh, how to do electronics. I mean, Sony, I always thought of them uh, quite highly, but clearly this is, this must be either just Sony branded, 
which which is a possibility and it's just assembled somewhere in uh, People's Republic of China or Or Sony is not that good of a quality as I thought but anyways uh, Look at those uh, trimmers, they're, they're not even straight, they're, everything's lifted off the board uh, but I mean yeah everything's at, at an angle it's yeah. and it's really really cheap PCB Anyways, uh, I'm not sure what we cut off over here. What was this board doing? I mean, this this is not a radio or anything. This is purely a, a cassette deck. So there must be a couple of things. So one, there's there's going to be uh, some sort of receiver for for the serial link between the units and I suspect the whole thing is done by this which actually let's scrape that off and we'll find out what it is okay um, so I've managed to rub off the remaining residue of, uh, of flux off of it and yes it is a NEC uh, D7508GF which is a, I've uh, looked it up on a datasheet uh, archive and it's a, it's a 4-bit uh, microcontroller so pretty much generic thing uh, but this this probably also takes uh, uh, takes care of that uh, um, serial communication uh, what not and I mean for a cassette deck uh, I think that's a, yet another piece of electronics that's been uh, over engineered there is far too much uh, on here yes it was the full logic uh, thing uh, and microcontroller on the might be a good idea to do it but uh, still there there's just far too much stuff on here I mean they, they couldn't fit it on, on one board even there is uh, just a whole bunch of uh, whole bunch of uh, boards and you know daughter boards uh, like here uh, side mounted uh, onto the main one uh, there was a Sony branded chip CXA one five five one P, and yeah, I mean, look, there's three relays on here. That's twelve volt relays. Why would you need rel relays on here? I don't know. <clears throat> Anyways, let's have a look of the cassette deck. We should be able to extract uh, a cassette from here. So yeah, the Hobbit. So let's look at the cassette setup. We have two motors. Uh, one probably is for the usual uh, cassette deck business stuff uh, so moving the cassette tape from one spool to another the second one I suspect is for uh, ejecting the cassette uh, when you press eject
So yeah, there we go. So there's a whole board in here. Oh, there's something hiding underneath. So let's let's peel that off and see. Thing. That's just. I thought there might be some uh, some chip on here, doing something, but it's not. It's just just the actual uh, flat flex connector. Two micro switches. Let's see how was this driven. I can see already that the head is not the type uh, that would move. You see, some of, some of the auto reverse systems had a uh, cassette. Uh, sorry, the reed head that was moving up and down to uh, change the tracks from uh, side A to, A to side B. Uh, but this was uh, this this head is basically like two heads, um, uh, two heads in one. So. On this one, you would have uh, both heads and simultaneously reading both tracks. Of of course, only one would be used at any given time. Um, and yeah, that's why you've got uh, quite a few more um, cables coming to it. And there is, I think, two two erasing heads, uh, depending on which direction you'd be going. Instead of using a permanent magnet, they uh, I think they're using an electromagnet here. So they would just engage one of those uh, because they those press uh, um, continuously against uh, the tape in uh, in the cassette. They would only switch on one of the electromagnets depending which direction the tape is going. So that's what would erase the the tape before actually recording something on it, and also the the rollers those would switch depending on which which direction uh, which side of the tape you're listening to okay I really want to get under this this shield to see the mechanical stuff how uh, what what makes this whole thing move and how it changes direction and whatnot this is probably going to be the most interesting part of the whole thing, given the electronics were so disappointing. Okay, getting somewhere. Let's take this off.
so I have to be very careful with this now. Um, I suspect, I'm quite certain actually, uh, once I take this cover off a lot of the things will fall, up, fall apart. Uh, but what what we've got here, the bigger motor over here, uh, that's what's driving the cassette and it's got a, uh, it's got five connections so clearly this would be uh, driven at the various speeds depending on what uh, what the deck was doing whether it was playing or rewinding and also it would uh, turn in either direction depending on which uh, which side of the tape that you're listening to now the smaller motor uh, you can see it's uh, not a belt uh, driven it's it's actually a gear driven this uh, underneath here there is Oh, strange now that whole thing comes off. Oh, no, no, not completely whole thing, okay. So... Okay, so that's interesting actually. You see, depending which direction you're going... This, this was driven by the uh, motor that drives the uh, that drives the cassette, and depending on the direction, this would shift the gears between left and right uh, cassette spool. Um, so. And here there is a switch, so this is somewhat interesting. So this, the first motor, depending on position of this, these are contacts on here. And those would uh, make a connection over here on this board and then through this cable that I've cut off uh, that would have went over somewhere. But as you can see, this is the motor that, for example, it now raises the cassette deck and it would eject the cassette whoops bear with me, let me retrieve the gear Okay, now this would push out the, the cassette out. Now, when you inserted the cassette, what happened then? There's got to be another switch somewhere that I've either taken off already, but when you pushed it a little bit in, this would then accept the cassette and it would do basically this, put the cassette down and push the, the head in. So there is well that's this is what moves the head in and out. Yeah, so a neat little compact design. What would switch the, um, the rollers? Ah, this. Yeah, so this, this was again uh, 
driven by yeah this gear so depending where it went it would either engage this or the other uh, the other pin so there we go and I'll spit the cassette back out those are the micro switches to read uh, the right protection and the cassette type on the on the on the bottom of the cassette and that that's all there is to it yeah old uh, old tech that's uh, become obsolete uh, I mean you can't buy cassettes anymore anywhere uh, but there's uh, there's been a lot of uh, mechanical stuff that is somewhat uh, somewhat interesting and yeah uh, it, it's it's becoming quite rare to see how the how the stuff works worked uh, back in the day but anyways uh, I'm starting to lose little bits and bobs so I think um, that's that's it for this one if you like this little quick teardown, uh, please do click like or subscribe for more videos and that's all for now. Take care.